Thank you so much for joining us, the 2019 UCA College Trilleting National Championship. Welcome to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. And welcome to WVU Coliseum, the home of the Mountaineers, with West Virginia and TCU locking horns for the second time this season. TCU had lost three in a row before a huge win on Saturday against Iowa State to control a season sweep of the Cyclones. The Horn Frogs now one game back of Texas for sixth. Try to get into that top six and get the first day of the Big 12 tournament off in a couple of weeks. Kevin Brown, John Thompson, the third. It's a huge game, not just for Big 12 seeding, but for TCU's bubble lives. Horn Frogs right now are a 10 in Joe Lenardi's bracket. They can't get tripped up here. You know. And that's a, that, the good thing is their remaining schedule. They're on the bubble, as you said, but there's still some very important games to be played. They still have Texas Tech and Kansas State, two teams that are vying for the regular season title, and also a Texas team. So there's opportunities there for Coach Dixon's team to get some quality wins, a lot of quality ball, a lot of important ball to be played coming down the stretch. Tonight's a quadrant two game. Those next three are all quad one games. And TCU only has two wins in quadrant one. Both against Iowa State. A win over Baylor at home as well, a fellow bubble team. We will talk to Joe Lenardi shortly during the show tonight. He's got the Frogs right now as a 10 seed. West Virginia, meanwhile, in the midst of a really difficult season marred by injuries and dismissals. The Mountaineers just trying to get a win. They come in having lost five in a row. Joe DeRosa, Terry Weimer, Darren George, are the men in stripes and West Virginia at home starts with the ball and the freshman Jordan McCabe runs the point. A young West Virginia starting lineup. Derek Culver, another freshman, controls. Emmett Matthews, a freshman, starts with the juniors Jermaine Haley and Lamont West. An early turnover and here's TCU with its senior point guard Alex Robinson leading the way. You know, it's going to be interesting to watch these two teams that as it relates to their defense they both are outstanding defensive coaches down through the years west virginia as everyone knows is going to press trap take chances and jamie dixon's team traditionally have been outstanding with this little containment we're going to stay in front every shot you get is going to be a tough contested shot like that one right there a three off the mark from west rebounded by matthews and then immediately taken away robinson got it from west a TCU team that is only about seven deep right now due to some transfers and injuries of its own. Robinson worms his way in, and the senior out of Fort Worth has tonight's first basket. Coach Huggins is going to explode soon. You know, two possessions, two turnovers right there. That's not the start that the Mountaineers wanted. West Virginia team that is dead last in conference games, minus 2.6 turnover margin. Great find by Culver. Matthews couldn't finish. A clean block for Quatnoy. Just back from an ankle injury Saturday. Here's Desmond Bain. And TCU's leading scorer can't connect. Haley the Juco transfer stripped and foul. Third year for Jamie Dixon is the head coach of TCU. Now these two schools are relatively new rivals, but there's nothing new for Jamie Dixon coaching here. Of course, the longtime Pitt head coach. Pitt and, and West Virginia, known rivals. Jamie's got some, some fans in the stands here. They're used to seeing him coach in this building. That's just over an hour's drive from Pittsburgh to Morgantown, formerly part of the backyard brawl, Jamie Dixon. Now trying to get TCU's first ever win in Morgantown. Frogs 0-5 in this building. At the end of the shot clock, West Virginia got a shot off, but it was well off the mark from Haley. A shot clock violation. And Bob Huggins not going to be thrilled with his offense so far. The eighth winning his head coach all time in Division I. He told us before the game he's never had a year quite like this with all the injuries, dismissals, and just plain bad luck for West Virginia. Yeah, you know, he said he's had he's had losing seasons before. He's had bad years as it relates to wins and losses, but just how this year has come together with the with the total number of losses that they have. I mean, personnel losses. He said, I've never had anything like this. I think you worded it best, just the bad luck. 
Mountaineers 0 for 3 with a couple of turnovers to start the game. There's McCabe, the freshman point guard out of Wisconsin. Culver, who is really their best player right now with a great drop off. And Jermaine Haley opens the scoring for West Virginia. And what I like right there was, was, was the cut by Haley. Their offense has been pretty stagnant, guys standing around. If they do that, the TCU, the Horn Frogs defense is going to get better and better and better. You have to move them, chain size of the court a little more. Robinson on the wraparound. The extra pass finds Noy, and he is called for a travel. The previous play, the big fella gets it in there, spins, shows his versatility. Nice cut right there. The movement. Draw a couple of players, find your man cutting. It's a really good passer, Culver, for a 6'10 freshman who leads the conference in rebounds in Big 12 games at 9.6 by percentage points over Diedrich Lawson. That one's thrown away by West. Another turnover, third for West Virginia. West, for, for, for this deep in the season, and for someone that's a junior, he's he looks a little nervous out there. He's, he's a little skittish. Well, Miller gave it right back with the travel. Bob Huggins will go to the bench for the first time. Andrew Gordon in the game. You were talking about Culver, the, the previous possession. He leads this conference in rebounding as a freshman. I mean, this is a man's conference. The, the young fella goes to the boards. Nine rebounds per game on the year, 9.6 in Big 12 play. Folks here in Morgantown are hoping this is a Rookie of the Year campaign for him. Here's Miller who deflected that pass. Noy gets a hand on that. And McCabe will cross midcourt with eight to shoot. Jordan McCabe off to Gordon. Got it in the lane. Andrew Gordon coming off a career-high 13 on Saturday. He smashed his previous mark of six. Here's a touch for Kevin Samuel, and the redshirt freshman is fouled. An early lead for West Virginia, a must-have game for TCU's bubble hopes. We'll talk about him with Joey Brackets. Bill Denardi joins us on the other side when we return to Morgantown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. Huge game for TCU's NCAA tournament hopes. This is a quadrant two game, but at a reeling West Virginia team, the Mountaineers uh, and Horned Frogs, TCU really needs to get that 19th victory today with a tough stretch coming up. How tenuous is TCU's bubble position? There's only one man to ask. It's our resident bracketologist, Joe Lenardi, who joins us live from Nashville. Joe, thanks for being with us. How are you? I'm great, guys. And when you talk Big 12 right now, you're talking about a couple teams, TCU and Oklahoma, whose league records in the old days would have almost disqualified them from at-large consideration. But as we saw last year with Oklahoma, and we're certainly headed in that direction again this year, there will be multiple teams in the at-large field with losing conference records. You can agree with that or not agree with that. It's just the way the field is shaping up for 2019. As it relates to this TCU team, Joe, three Quadrant One games coming up. This, as we mentioned right now, is a Quad Two game at West Virginia. What more does TCU need for this team to feel safe for the NCAA tournament? I think if they can stay right where they are uh, and at, at six and eight in the league, uh, finish no worse than two games under 500 with their final league record, that would be eight and 10. I think then a win in the conference tournament and they'll surely be safe. Uh, again, given the status of this year's at-large field, uh, maybe even one loss less than that could do it. They bought themselves a little bit of breathing room with that big win over the weekend at Iowa State. They lead by four and a three from Quatnoy. Joe, this is John. Quick question, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. The American Conference, you know, following our game here, we have Memphis and Temple. And those are two teams, obviously you have, you have Temple right on the bubble, but still in. How, how do you see them playing out if 
that they stay in the field. And can Memphis do anything to work its way in? Memphis would have to go on a serious run here, John, probably to the final of the American tournament. I mean, we don't know completely for sure what their path to that would be. Would they get an opportunity to beat Houston and Cincinnati on a neutral floor in the conference tournament? Will they win tonight over another bubble team in the Owls? I think it's a more significant game at this point for Temple because its at-large uh, chances are much more realistic at this point. Uh, generally, you wouldn't you know, knock a team too far back with a difficult road loss. But with Memphis not being in the field or really that close to the field, uh, this could knock Temple off the bubble, at least, you know, until their next game, depending upon what some other bubble teams do tonight, particularly Utah State out west and uh, Butler playing now in the Big East. TCU with the ball on a four-point lead. Joel Denari is with us. Joe, you've got TCU as a 10 seed right now. Texas, Oklahoma, Baylor, a few other Big 12 teams are on that line. Um, which Big 12 team situation to you is the most precarious in terms of missing the field? I would say it's Oklahoma because they're another two games back in the standings at uh, five and nine. That's with a two-game winning streak, mind you. Uh, uh, but, of course, they overcame finishing 4-11 and 11 last year over the final two months to get in and get a 10 seed. They were 3-9 and nine now, 5-9 and nine in the league. Obviously, they have some terrific wins. Uh, you know, I have to hold my nose when I look at teams with conference records like that. I know a lot of reasonable people who disagree. The fact of the matter is, in the committee room, believe it or not, your conference record is not on your team sheet. League games are not evaluated any differently. Uh, again, that's not how I would do it, but our job is to forecast what the committee would do, and, and there's little doubt in my mind that if Selection Sunday were tonight, both the Horned Frogs and the Sooners would get in. Last thing for you, Joe, and we're curious about this here. West Virginia, 10 and 17, 2 and 12 in conference. Um, has enough of a net ranking for a road game here to qualify as a quadrant two game for TCU. Now, if TCU went out and beat the number 33 team in the net at home, that would also be a quadrant two game. Does the committee value those two equally because they're both in the quadrant two realm, or do they evaluate within the quadrants at all? I guess it depends on which column of the team sheet you're looking at. If it's the generic quad two listing, then yes, they're equal. But the team sheets also break down within each quadrant how you do uh, home road neutral, uh, how you do conference versus non-conference. And even though the overall conference record is not an issue, they do uh, highlight the non-conference games separately. So uh, I I'm generally in favor of the quad system. And, and I think common sense would tell you that in spite of West Virginia's difficulties this year, it's not easy to stroll into Morgantown and get a win under any circumstances. Uh, Coach, I always say the two biggest four-letter words in our sport are road game, and I think you'd probably agree with that. 100% I agree with that. And like you said, no matter what type of year they're having, no one comes in here and just gets walks. As we're seeing now with a three from the cave, West Virginia back in the lead. Joe Lenardi, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to I hearing mean, home teams from win you in over the next couple weeks. 70% of the time uh, for a reason. It's hard to do. Thanks, Joey Brackets. Uh, Joe Lenardi from Nashville, kind enough to join us for a few minutes. TCU back in front on the putback from Desmond Bain. So the Horn Frogs and the Sooners right now, the two lowest seeds as Joe has eight of the 10 Big 12 teams currently in the field. Certainly an important one for TCU tonight. The early returns are good with the Horn Frogs up one on the road, despite a three from Jordan McCabe.
coming up after our game tonight, Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile will roll out on ESPN with Wisconsin and Indiana at Assembly Hall. Badgers 11 and 5 in the Big Ten and the Hoosiers in complete free fall trying to break out of their epic funk. 9 Eastern, 8 Central over on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Kevin Brown, John Thompson the third from Morgantown, where TCU has an early one-point lead. Kind of Joe Leonardo to join us for the last four minutes. For those folks that are just joining us now, what stands out to you about these first eight and a half minutes or so? Well, you know, well, you said Joe was with us for four minutes, and as you said, the first eight and a half minutes, we have not had an offensive explosion as of yet. Fair to <laughs> say. Both of these teams are very stingy on defense traditionally. And, and you look at once again, West Virginia is coming right down to the very end of the shot clock before getting a shot. TCU offensively, when you play West Virginia, even a, a down year like this year, their defense isn't as good, as, as disruptive as it has been in recent memory. But they force you to just play basketball. They don't let you run your sets. It's not going to be a pretty smooth offensive game. Your guys just have to understand spacing, ball movement, and play because they take you out of whatever sets you want to run. And that's the 10th combined turnover of the game between eight field goals. Exactly what Jamie Dixon told us before the game. We asked him about Alex Robinson as a senior point guard and his freedom. He said, look, this is not the game where we're going to run a lot of plays. You just want to hang on to the ball against West Virginia. Even a thinner West Virginia team than in years past. And TCU's already turned it over five times. Now, the benefit of having Robinson out there is he is a senior. He's been through it. He's outstanding with the ball. He usually makes very good decisions. But this West, this West Virginia team forces you to make those decisions every trip down the court. The freshman Culver muscles it in. Already our fifth lead change of the game. TCU has gone off the bench with Kendrick Davis, RJ Nemhard. That's about as deep as the Horned Frogs will go. Seven-man rotation. J.D. Miller trying to muscle his way inside. 13 to shoot. It will stay with TCU. Previous possession, you see Culver, the freshman, carving out space, holding his position. This young man is strong and poised for a freshman. He's a big boy down there. He gets that space. It's his. No one's taking it. First time we'd seen him in person. I think we were both just physically impressed in shoot around today. Certainly doesn't look like a freshman. No way. They, they, grow, they grow them a little differently down here, I guess. He looks nothing like, he looks like a, 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 a grizzly old veteran. And a Youngstown, Ohio, Derek Culver. Robinson, tough shot at the end of the shot clock. And West Virginia can push with Jermaine Haley. Nice drop off Haley to Chase Harler. Haley avoided the charge, got the assist, and the Mountaineers lead by three. You see slowly but surely the TCU offense is getting pushed out towards half court. That's that West Virginia pressure. Robinson knifing his way in, fouled, and a chance to tie to the line. You got Robinson the vet taking his time, probing, probing. He's gotten in there a couple of times, gets it up to the basket, gets a chance to go to the line. Get the, old, the three points the old-fashioned way. All-time assist leader at TCU. 14 points, five rebounds, 10 assists. The first meeting between these two. That first meeting a month ago, January the 15th, TCU won 98-67. 31 points, the Horned Frogs' largest win in their time in the Big 12, and the Mountaineers' largest loss in their time in the Big 12. Culver. Strong take, and Culver finishes. Freshman. Big body, strong body. Unafraid. Derek Culver just two of nine on Saturday in an 82-75 loss at Baylor. He said back-to-back -back buckets. On the bounce feed, Quat Noy from Robinson. Noy leading the way with seven for TCU. Robinson is good. He's going to have pressure on him. It'll be interesting to see as the game goes on if he wears down because he's got the responsibility of handling the ball against his pressure for 40 minutes. West rattles it out. Look at Culver fight for the rebound. Culver is fouled. 
Derek Culver aggressive all over the offensive boards for West Virginia. Big fella, don't be so mean. You see why he leads the conference in rebounding. So the ball goes up, he's going to pursue it. He's not one of these guys you can just turn and check and put your body on. You have to drive him back, hold him up. A lot of times when, when, when stopping him from getting a rebound, you don't have to worry about trying to get the ball yourself. You can just turn in front and hold him off and hope your teammates get it. Otherwise, he's going to touch it. Culver is second in the nation right now in fouls drawn per 40 minutes. He draws nearly eight fouls per 40 minutes. In layman's terms, that means he gets to the line a lot. And you saw the stat there, leads the Big 12 in free throws attempted. Just a 57% foul shooter, but he hit both. Robinson found himself alone with a pivot foot on the ground. And TCU and West Virginia trade buckets. He's poised. And you know, the value of, of Culver, you know, not just he gets to the line, he wears the opposition's front line out. They're going to be in foul trouble. Something that TCU cannot afford with only a seven-man rotation. West threw it away, a collision. Nemhard hits the deck. Looked like Chase Harlow took a shot in the ribs for WVU. Back and forth they go in Morgantown. You can smell it. Champ week, March, are nearly upon us. Down the stretch we come in the Big 12, where Joe Bernardi has the top eight seeds all in the NCAA tournament right now. And if the season ended today, which it most certainly does not, TCU and West Virginia would play for a third time. Winner of that game would play Texas Tech. Right now it's still Kansas State in the lead by a half game over Tech. And a game over Kansas, though the Jayhawks cleaned up K-State at home yesterday. Desmond Bain in transition. Puts TCU back into the lead. That, that's about the fourth possession where West Virginia is taking a desperation shot at the end of the shot clock. I mean, this, this TCU defense, the, the West Virginia defense gets a lot of conversation. The TCU defense has been very good tonight. A little earlier in the shot clock there, and a three for Lamont West. And I'm glad to see that because he's been struggling. I mean, he's had some bad turnovers. He's, he's stumbling around out there. It's good for him to hit a shot. Maybe he can going a little bit here. Missed his first two plus two turnovers. 32% three-point shooter. Bain and Davis with a disconnect. Apparently last touched by West Virginia. Bob Huggins doesn't think so. Disconnect right there, but that's what they have to start doing. If West Virginia is going to pressure you out the half court, you have to start cutting behind them. Huggy's fired up over there, boy. We're about to have some fun. When Huggy gets fired up, this crowd gets fired up. Davis with two to shoot. And rebounded by Culver. Look at how he pursued that ball. I mean, he's talking about getting a rebound out of your area. He tracked that thing down from the rim to the corner. He's got five already. Here's another turnover. Thrown away by Harler. Bain from Robinson on the stop and score. Desmond Bain, who's got a chance to be one of the all-time best players at TCU, a junior, already a thousand-point scorer with another bucket. You know, West Virginia is, is offensively challenged and that the ball doesn't go in the basket enough. They can't couple that with turning the ball over at the rate that they're doing right now. They have to get it up on the board to give them a chance to go get the rebound. A stumble by West, but he was bumped. J.D. Miller, his first foul. TCU, 75-72 winners over Iowa State on Saturday. And what Jamie Dixon told us is he was impressed with their defense in the first half. I'm thrilled with how they defended the second half as Haley puts West Virginia back in front. But is that a product of a seven-man rotation? You may not only wear now with shots, but maybe defensively as the game goes on? 100%. And I'm really interested to see how the second half plays out here. For the most part in the first half, so far, we have 536 left, but they've done a very good job defensively. But it's been, it's been a pattern with this TCU team 
that their defense softens up in the second half. And 100%, when you're only playing seven, eight guys, you know, fatigue sets in at both ends of the court. Field goal percentage defense, scoring defense in conference games. TCU is ninth, only ahead of West Virginia. Horn Frogs a much better scoring team. Look at Culver get up and knock another one away. You know, when you run your sideline out of bounds plays, after you run whatever pattern you're running, if the ball's still out of bounds, you just have to get open. That previous one, Culver tipped the TCU players, ran the pattern that they just watched. And then Noy throws it away. Deflection City in Morgantown. Haley will head to the line. You see the pressure right there playing the passing lanes. Noy gets a little flustered. That looks like the defensive. Oh, that looks like Huggies. That looks like West Virginia defense right there, baby. They can show you flashes. This this young group that he has, that he's patient, as patient as he can be. They're learning. They're still growing. They show flashes. They show glimpses. They just haven't been able to sustain it. Only one for two. Gets the point off the sixth TCU turnover. West Virginia team that, of course, a couple of weeks ago dismissed Isa Ahmad, Wesley Harris, Sagaba Kanate, Beetle Bolden are out for the year. There's not a senior on this Mountaineers squad. Six freshmen, a bunch of them in the rotation now. Four of their top six scorers lost due to injury or dismissal. An undermanned group leads by one after the Robinson layup. McCabe, the freshman who really played well on Saturday and is really playing well today. Jordan McCabe had a season high 14 Saturday, and he's halfway there. As we said, young fellas growing up. Mr. Basketball last year in the state of Wisconsin. Noy tries for the putback. High flying rebound to Culver. Here's Harler from McCabe into Robinson. Trying to draw Robinson's second foul. Bain with a nice bouncer to Robinson. And a blocking foul called against McCabe. Robinson attempted to sidestep him, and McCabe picks up his second. I, I want to see that again. I thought he was set. He tried to sidestep and just clipped him on the side right there. I don't know about that one. He was there. He was set. I'm, in, in fact, I may disagree with that one. Robinson, a 67% shooter. No, I was going to say, what did the kids say? Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. You read my mind. As a, as a cheerleader, as a fan, the fans <laughs> behind us. Right behind us. Ball don't he lie, misses baby. misses both. Oh, the Mountaineer Maniacs are in all their glory behind us. Haley. Denied by Samuel. A red shirt freshman. He's got a block in 11 straight games. Bain has to adjust, and Noy is way off at a three, but Samuel cleans it up. Shot clock did not reset. Davis off the Samuel screen, has space. And a foul going against Kevin Samuel. His second foul for TCU. And I tell you what, they're going to have to take him out the game, and that's too bad. He, he's an, an underappreciated skill. Samuel's setting some massive screens out there. He's getting his teammates open. All-time block nice. shot leader at TCU. He's going to have to check out before the start of his one and one Yep, with the two fouls, he's going to the bench. But he's getting his teammates open out there. Boy, neither Samuel nor Culver look like a freshman. Samuel's a redshirt freshman, but still, they are physically imposing young kids down low. One and one Haley gets the first. You know, down through the years, the, uh, the, old, the, the nutrition element, the strength and conditioning, they're doing something different. Those are two big boys to be freshmen. If only they had that when you and I were playing. 
just the nutrition element we were missing. I'm leaving that one alone, okay. Kevin. The Tudor's biscuit I had this morning here in Morgantown was my nutrition element. Nemhard with a finish off glass. RJ Nemhard, the redshirt freshman, his first basket. And here comes Haley. In the corner of three, Chase Harler. Largest lead for West Virginia. West Virginia with two wins in the conference this year, both in this building. Kansas by one, Oklahoma by eight. Can they get another likely tournament team? Bain with a miss, cleaned up by West. Here's Lamont West. Rebound to Noy. West try to draw the charge. Nemhard is fouled. Six-point lead for the Mountaineers at home. West Virginia trying to fell the frogs in round two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. TCU's got a heck of a tough schedule coming down the stretch. Home games. The next two against the Big 12's potential co-leaders, Texas Tech and Kansas State, a road trip to Texas. But first, to get through Morgantown, perhaps they thought it would be easy. The first meeting between the two, 98-67. Desmond Bain dropped 26, one shy of a career high. West Virginia just three of 18 from deep, turned it over 17 times. Significantly different story in the first 16 minutes and 54 seconds today. Now, and Joey Brackett's talked about just how hard it is to get road wins. And so, you know, as a fan, you may look at the schedule and say, hey, TCU, I'm a TCU fan. We're going to West Virginia. They're last in the conference. That should, let's pencil in that win. It, it just doesn't work like that. And so, you know, you have a West Virginia team that's playing much better so far this half. Both of these teams. Are, are, are thin, meaning that they're low in numbers, and it'll be interesting to see which team's conditioning is the best, which team will wear down in the second half. TCU has played seven today, West Virginia eight. No Brandon Knapper, the redshirt freshman point guard, out with a neck sprain for the Mountaineers. West from Haley on the drop off. Lamont West with five. West Virginia now 10 assists on 12 baskets. But they didn't get back quickly, and Bain scores in transition off a of make. Bob Huggins going to go to his bench, bring on Tavon Horton, the invited walk-on. He is so frustrated with the lack of transition defense there. I mean, West makes a nice little pull-up jumper right there, mid-range game. And before you can say basketball, West, Bain is at the rim making a layup. Huggy doesn't like that. Haley, strong rebound to Miller for TCU. In transition again, Noy back to Robinson. Nemhard, no on the three, the rebound to Quat Noy, who's got seven and six so far. And Bain travels for the seventh TCU turnover. Thursday night, big Thursday doubleheader for you on ESPN. Start the Big Ten. Michigan looking to rebound the loss to Michigan State. Wolverines host Nebraska, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, followed by USC and UCLA in the Conference of Champions. Still wide open Pac-12 after Washington. It's anybody's game. Both games on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Kevin, you want to give us a quick Walton impression? Oh, my gosh. How could you ask such a thing? West Virginia, TCU, this is what dreams are made of, John Thompson. Throw it down, Culver. Take away for Nemhard. You just baited me into that, thank you. Here's Nemhard again from Noy, and again misses a three. Haley can push for West Virginia. Horton, just into the game, Tavon Horton. The West Virginia player of the year last year. But it's Bain again. This time he can't finish in transition. They're up six, and the crowd's feeling pretty good. But halftime probably can't come soon enough for the Mountaineers. They're, they're, 
They're tired. They're giving up. TCU's once again getting giving up easy shots, uncontested Everybody shots. Knows. They've missed a couple, but they're just TCU's getting a wide open shot every time down the court. Bob Huggins will take his use it or lose it timeout. We'll return to Morgantown in 30 seconds. Huggy in the near is up four. Six layups and a dunk in the first half for TCU. And it, it, it's fatigue is setting in for the Mountaineers. I mean, this is just unacceptable. They just push, push the ball. You know, that's the third or fourth time out of the previous six possessions where they're getting right to the rim in transition. Bob Huggins settles his team down with a timeout. Well, that's to be determined. We don't know whether to settle down. Team down. Exactly. But this is a very thin team right now. Two season ending injuries, two dismissals. They played nine in the game. Culver lost it on the way up. Here's West. Got the defender Miller in the air, draws the foul, and finishes. Second foul against J.D. Miller, and Lamont West has a chance at three. You see the stick to right there. Nice footwork by Culver, a slap around West who comes up with it and does something that he, this season hasn't been that strong at finishing through contact. That time he absorbed the contact, contact and put it in. 76% free throw shooter missed. Nemhard has the ball for TCU, which does have its use it or lose it timeout remaining. I was wondering whether they were gonna go for a two for one right now, which doesn't look like they're gonna do. Jamie takes that use it or lose it timeout. They're gonna draw up something right here. Well, if you don't have ESPN Plus yet, it's time. No better time than the present. Thousands of live events, including college troops, UFC, boxing, soccer, the entire treasure trove that is the 30 for 30 library. Start your seven-day free trial. Download the ESPN app. Visit ESPN.com. Uh, if you haven't downloaded ESPN Plus yet, there are still a few games left of the Chris Clemens experience at Campbell. 3,000 plus point scorer. He's knocking on the door of Doug McDermott. He's in the top 10 all time. You can catch his games on ESPN Plus. Mike Dom just at the 3,000 point mark last weekend for South Dakota State. I mean, we're in the Big 12. We love power conference basketball. But there's so much great basketball happening all across the country at Division One level. Plus, you can be the smart one going into March if you know Chris Clemens, you know Mike Dom. And you're going to have fun watching Chris mm -hmm. Clemens, I'll tell you that. Both of those guys, bucket getters. TCU needs a bucket getter with four to shoot. Robinson, step back. Rebound to Matthews. West Virginia can hold for the last shot. Matthews fouled from behind. If that's Miller, and it is, that's his third. And that's just not wise. You pick up your third. You put them at the line to shoot one and one. Seven seconds on the clock. It's reckless with a seven-man rotation. And Jamie Dixon will get Miller out of the game for Kendrick Davis. You know, it, it is reckless with a seven-man rotation. But sometimes fatigue makes you do some wacky things. And obviously, he's, he knows he made a mistake. He's over there a little frustrated right there. But, you know, we, that, that was a fatigue foul. Free throw missed. TCU can have the last shot. Davis. West all over him. Davis trying to throw it away. And West Virginia's lead is six at the half. Ties the largest lead for the Mountaineers tonight. TCU needs a road win. So far, not so good. John Brickley, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams with a halftime report right after these messages. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. Six-point lead, West Virginia at the half, 36-30. The Mountaineers trying to split the season series 
with TCU. Kevin Brown, John Thompson, the third. This is a loss that wouldn't look great on TCU's resume. The Horned Frogs at 10 seed in Joe Lenardi's bracket right now, and they are down six to a young West Virginia team that's playing well. You know, and, and TCU does need to think about brackets, seeding, bubble. They need to worry about the Mountaineers right now, and, you know, and the child soon shall lead them. The Mountaineers right now, you look at them at the bottom of the, of, of the conference standings. Well, they're so young. They have two freshmen right now that in this game are leading, leading the way. You know, when you have Jordan McCabe who comes in, you know, with, with seven points, four assists, provided a spark in many different ways. You know, and then the big fella inside, Culver, who is just a man, he's averaging just over nine boards a game. He's got seven already in this first half, six points, and his presence was felt much more than, than what's shown on a stat sheet. And so, you know, you get, like I said, you have a, and the, a child should lead them. They have two, two, two rookies, two freshmen that are leading the way right now. Two-point field goals, both teams have been 12. West Virginia, a couple of threes. And the Mountaineers have the rebounding edge by three. Bob Huggins' team has lost five in a row as part of this injury and suspension plague season, but a strong 20 minutes as West Virginia searching for a third conference win. Again for TCU. Texas Tech on Saturday, ESPN 2. K-State comes to town Monday, either ESPN or ESPN 2. This is the resume right now. It's good for this year's bubble. It's not here tight. A couple of quadrant two wins against Iowa State, but Jamie Dixon's group needs a little more meat on the bone. Try to get to seven and eight in the Big 12. Pick up a quadrant two road win. Second half starts with TCU in possession. Desmond Bain just three of eight in the first half, but he blows by McCabe here. Beg your pardon. Blows by Harler and gets TCU on the board first. Nice execution. Coming out of halftime. TCU starts the second half with RJ Nemhard. No JD Miller, who picked up that third foul in the waning seconds of the first half. West scoops it in. Long arms of Lamont West. Good for a field goal. He has nine. Here's Quatnoy. Nice serve to Samuel for the stuff. Punishing the rim. Nice penetration and drop right there by Noy. He tried that a couple times in the first half, unsuccessfully got in there, dropped it off to his teammates. They didn't convert. Right big, sure. I was just said the big fella made sure that didn't happen just right there. Three straight possessions with a basket to open the half. There's Culver out of the double to McCabe. Robinson shades him left. McCabe throws it away. A steal for TCU, which had seven in the first half. West Virginia has started the second half with Harler instead of Matthews, who started the game. Noy with a deep one. And, and right there, West has, I mean, scout, that's a scouting report mistake right there. Everyone knows Noy has deep, deep range. He wants to get it off. He gets this off quickly. You, you have to get up into his chest. You can't give him room. And then West comes back and tries a, I'm going to get you back a shot attempt, which just wasn't wise. Bain. TCU has scored in the first three possessions of the second half, and Bain can make it four at the free throw line. This young man, Noy, when he was out, he missed a couple games. They lost. He's back. He makes them a much better offensive team. First, you see him penetrate for the dish. Then you see the defender, a little hesitation right there. Hand down, man down. Quatnoy missed three games, as you mentioned. The previous two games to Saturday's one over Iowa State, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State with an ankle injury. They lost both. He missed the Kansas State game with an illness. TCU lost that game. Six and eight in the Big 12, 0 and three without Noy, who was monstrous down the stretch on Saturday. 20 points, 13 rebounds, had eight points in a row at one junction when TCU came back in the second half to beat Iowa State. And, and Jamie told him that's, that's enough injuries, <laughs> that's enough, that, all that's out of your, enough illnesses, you have to play on out here, fella. Eighth lead change of the game, TCU on a 7-0 run has retaken the lead. 
Culver, nowhere to go with Samuel all over him. Forces one, rebounded by Nemhart. And that's a matchup that we're going to see in this conference for years to come. Samuel going against Culver. Two freshmen right there. Another TCU turnover. Here's Haley. Has a lane and scoops West Virginia back in front. No help defense right there. That, that lane kind of opened up like the parting of the Red Sea. Bain. Purple C, perhaps? Is that two on the nose? <laughs> it's, it's accurate. Haley, very athletic player, junior college transfer. Missed it. Culver cleans it up. And, and that, that purple C just opened up again. That time Samuel had came over to help to, to stop the layup right there by Haley, which left Culver, no one boxing Culver out on the rebound. Culver a basket and a rebound shy of a double-double would be his sixth in conference games. J.D. Miller with the three fouls will make his second half debut now for TCU. He replaces Samuel, so the Frogs go a little small. Now let's see if Culver gets the next several rebounds right now. Matthews. Culver certainly tried his best to get that one. Tipped away, and here's Noy on the break. Off to Robinson, stripped. Well defended in transition by Chase Harler. No, I, I, have, I have a funny feeling. Coach Huggy talked about yeah, transition yeah, defense yeah, a little yeah, bit at halftime. Yeah. Getting back right there. So Miller checked in for Samuel, and immediately Samuel comes back in for Nemhard. Why do you think Jamie Dixon made such a, a quick return to the game for Samuel. But when Samuel was not, it, when he's not in the game, Culver's just dominating the boards. His presence is felt. Samuel matches up a little better with him. A five-second violation called against Robinson on the inbound. That's that West Virginia defense right there. I said it in the first half. Once you make whatever motions and movements that the play calls for, then you got to get open. It's a lonely feeling to be the guy taking the ball out of bounds and your teammates are just standing there watching you instead of getting open. That's a lonely feeling. That time it was Robinson in isolation. Matthews, the freshman, going to work. And if not for that last tip, Culver was ready to throw that one back down. Good transition defense right there. McCabe did a nice job on Robinson until that head fake, but Robinson left it short. Culver has the rebound, his 10th. Run to the floor. Right there. You see, every time they got runs and points towards the rim, you don't have to throw it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Philip 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. One of the great traditions here at West Virginia University is the naming of the Mountaineer. That is the current Mountaineer mascot, Trevor Keish. He is the 65th all-time Mountaineer. You hold the position for a year. It is a full scholarship position. Trevor told us he participates in about 400 events during the calendar year. And later in the game, West Virginia will announce the new Mountaineer mascot. There are four finalists. Timothy Eads, Brooke Ashby, Thaddeus Dilley, Connor Caprone. And the winner will take over for Trevor and serve a one-year term as the new Mountaineer mascot. So I'll be happy to reveal those results later on in the game. Can you serve more than one year, or is it capped at I, one year? I think it's capped at one year, because okay. a lot of people want to do it. I bet, room, books, board, tuition, yeah. full scholarship. I bet you the line is long to sign up. That, that sign up sheet is long. We're, we're being told by a wise source that you can only serve one year as the Mountaineer mascot. He may or may not be standing right behind us. 
Both teams a little sloppy right now. The offensive execution is non-existent. There's the Mountaineer it's right Trevor. there. You know, it's, you know, it's not sloppy. What execution is not sloppy? That beard right there. That's tight. That beard is very <laughs> tight. How long would it take you to grow that? Over under three and a half years. Me? I, I, it would not happen. It couldn't happen. <laughs> Impossible. Just a little stubble is all I get. Miller lines it up. A three from the corner. We're tied. J.T. Miller, just a 23% three-point shooter. The game slowed down a little bit in the second half. It probably that, benefits both teams. I was going to ask. I think that favors both offensively. What a find by Culver. And McKay missed the three. And then McCabe jumps in to take away the pass. Couldn't finish. Culver fouled by Samuel. Great hustle by the West Virginia freshman. Great help. You know, he missed, he missed the three. A lot of times you put your head down, you pout. No, he comes right back in and gets a steal. His hustle lands his, his, his buddy at the foul line. It looked like it was on the way up, I thought, but it is apparently not a shooting foul. Oh, wow. That, that definitely was on the way up. Just having pow wow. Yeah, this is discussed a little bit. Mm, Overruled. Wow. Foul on the floor. Okay. Off the curl. Harler from McCabe. It's a great inbounds play. That is a foul on the floor definitively. Hey, coming up later tonight after our game over on ESPN, Super Tuesday presented by Boost, Boost Mobile heads to Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana against Ethan Happ at number 19, Wisconsin. 9 Eastern, 8 Central over on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile. You know, we were at shoot-around today, and we saw TCU go over and defend West Virginia's out-of-bounds plays for a good 10, 15 minutes. I, I don't know if the fellows weren't paying attention because West Virginia's getting a shot. That was a turnover right there. This is a bad pass. Didn't catch it. But they're getting a good shot every possession on out-of-bounds plays. It's exactly what Bob Huggins told us about his offense. We're getting shots. We're not hitting them. McCabe. That was not a goal to him. It was awfully close. Bain is fouled on the way up. They are stark raving mad here at Morgantown. The Mountaineer faithful, including Bob Huggins, that there was not a goaltend at the other end. Both coaches are a little upset. Mm. I think they might have a point. They might have a point. What's Jamie? Jamie's mad also. <laughs> Maybe Jamie also thought it was a goaltend. Oh no, Jamie! They, they, they didn't call. They called that a non-shooting foul. That's back interesting down as well. Interesting. I is thought Bain was going word. up. <laughs> he absolutely was going up. How often do you see this? <laughs> Both coaches, for completely Both. separate reasons, are incensed. Everybody's mad. I'll just say this from first-hand experience: you don't want to get this crowd mad. Do you care to elaborate on your first-hand experience? Hey, we played here. Very similar play to what just happened. West, Whoa. oh boy. That was more than two steps. Yeah, West thought he was in layup lines right there or something. You have to dribble, buddy. The dunk contest was a couple of weeks ago. And this drives me crazy. West is shaking his head, upset and mad. Like, who are you mad at? That clearly was a walk. Who are you mad at? Offensive foul, TCU. Samuel with a moving screen, and now this is going to get really tricky for Jamie Dixon. Samuel has picked up his fourth foul with 13-15 to go. Again, TCU has a seven-man rotation. Maybe in eighth, the freshman center, Russell Barlow, who plays sparingly and is a little banged up. He has not appeared in the game. So Jamie Dixon goes very small with the 5'11 Kendrick Davis replacing the 6'11 Samuel. 
and Culver immediately gets it offensive rebound and a chance at a three-point play. And, and right there, you see the Samuel effect. As soon as he goes out of the game, Culver works his way to the boards, gets a rebound. Time for an end one right here. One hand snatch it. Ah, give me that. Soon as soon as Samuel goes out, and you're going to see him as long as Samuel's on that bench. All of a sudden, Culver's presence is going to be felt a lot more in this game. West Virginia had missed seven shots in a row until that. Culver completes the three-point play. He's got a double-double, his sixth in conference play. West Virginia's back in the lead. The foul, by the way, was the third against Quad North. That is a three-pointer from Quad North. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he does. And you know what? You got to give the credit right there to Robinson. Robinson has to take over this game right now. He has to control the ball, settle his team down. On his penetration, they're over-helping. The noise would be to get all of those shots on Robinson's driving kicks. Okay, bit of Davis, stripped. Bain with a great look ahead to Robinson, and a rejection by McKay, but a foul called on the body. McCabe with his third. At the defensive end, West Virginia cannot lose track of Quad Noy. You see the penetration right here by Robinson. Too much help. Too much help by West, who's actually below Robinson, who's wide open. Noy's going to knock down that shot every day, all day. Is that on West or is that on Haley, or is it on both? I think it was on West. And you know, after after studying him and watching him, Robinson is penetrating two pass most of the time. Well, he's 0 for 5 at the line, Robinson. TCU's 5 of 11. McCabe trying to draw contact. Matthews slaps it to Robinson. He goes between his legs. No look to Davis. That was just plum ridiculous. Plum ridiculous, but we saw it the whole first half. On a change of possession, TCU gets a breakout layup. Again, saw it the whole first half. Go after the offensive rebound. Mr. Robinson, ball's bouncing around between the legs. Mr. Davis just too fast. He has become one of the most exciting scorers in the nation. Temple and Memphis follow us here on ESPNU. Let me just tell you, Jeremiah Martin is much must see TV. Yes. I saw the young fella drop 41 in a half in one half of college basketball. In 20 minutes, he scored 41 points against a good South Florida defensive team. That was a game where Memphis had 13 points as a team in the first half. Jeremiah scored 41 on his own in the second. Great, great half court adjustment by Penny at that half. The halftime adjustment was give it to Jeremiah <laughs> and Jeremiah go to work. Benny looks awfully smart, doesn't he? <laughs> and he delivered, baby. He delivered. Emmett Matthews Jr. with a three. West Virginia back in the lead by one. First basket for the freshman Matthews. Our 11th lead change of this seesaw game. Noy. And the rebound won by Culver, his 14th to go with 11 points. Surprise, surprise, but I'll tell you what, they got lucky right there. Matthews left Noy open again. You can't leave him. Culver, yes. He's five for six from the field, three for three from the line. He's got 13 and 14. And again, no Samuel in the game. The TCU sensational center with four fouls. Robinson yet to score in this half. Not looking to right now. And that was better defense. You know Robinson's penetrating the pass. Everyone stayed home that time. Miller over Culver. That's nice poise down there. He took his time. J.D. Miller on track to be the all-time leader in games played at TCU. Tonight his 131st. Five away from Brandon Parrish's record. He's never missed a game. McCabe, yes. Jordan McCabe. 
Good screen, too, by Culver. Jordan McCabe off a season high 14 Saturday with nine. Halfway through this second half. Davis, that's an offensive foul for a push off. That's a good call. Jamie's upset, but he can't argue that one. That, that absolutely was a push off by Davis right there. Second foul against Davis, TCU's fourth. Miller and Noy are playing with three. Samuel on the bench with four. West Virginia gets to the free throw line more than just about anybody in the country. There's a fumble on a lower pass. Noy sweeps it to Robinson. Great bounce speed. Davis missed it. Once again, TCU with the turnover, the missed shot, they end up with a, with a layup. That was a three on one. He just missed the layup. Holler for three. Timeout, TCU. West Virginia has matched its largest lead. The Mountaineers up six, looking for a big home upset of TCU. And you see right here, this is a huge swing right there. A missed breakaway layup by Davis. Poor transition defense, no communication, leads to a three by Harler. That's a five-point swing in a game where buckets have been hard to get. Baskets have been hard to come by. That's a huge turnaround right there. Harler with his second three. He was just six out of 38 from deep in Big 12 play. Two for two today. McCabe with his seventh assist, one shy of a season high. Miller, and a foul is against Culver, who tried to go over his back. Amazingly, Culver's first foul. He fouled out last game in 26 minutes. Picks up his first, it will send Miller to the line. That's coming out of a timeout. TCU's run that same play twice in a row. They tried to get, they get Robinson going back door. That time he gets it and drops it off to Miller. Tomorrow night on ESPN, another star-studded NBA doubleheader. Kyrie Irving, Dame Lillard, the Celtics, and Trailblazers at 8 Eastern, 7 Central kick it off. Then LeBron James and the Lakers. Let's see the win. LeBron just needs a W. They get the Pelicans at the Staples Center. The Lakers just lost to the Pelicans a couple of games ago without Anthony Davis. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central with NBA Countdown. Big night down the stretch run in the association. And now you see Jamie, Coach Dixon, just trying to buy some time right here. They go to a zone for the first time tonight. He's trying to slow West Virginia down. Matthews, long three. West Virginia had made four straight shots until then. Baines had a quiet shooting night. Only four for 11, 10 points after 26 against West Virginia in the first meeting. Again, TCU won by 31 at home on January the 15th. Worst loss ever for West Virginia in the Big 12. Biggest win ever for TCU in the Big 12. The tables completely turn in round two. Different ball game tonight. Culver out of the double, and Noy was waiting. RJ Nemhart. Miller scored on Culver a couple of possessions ago, and this time Miller gets Culver to foul him once more. Second straight foul on Culver, and a chance for three for Miller. They, they might want to keep going to that. Miller's poised down there. He scored on the left block once. This time he comes over to the right block. He's just a little too crafty for the freshman down there. West Virginia trying to hang on for an upset win against TCU. Spurred on by the fabulous freshman Derek Culver. He has his sixth double-double in Big 12 play. Six double-double. Right now he's got 14 boards. His season high is 15. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's going to get one more rebound today. Careful but there. But this is his effort. He, he works. You know, he's not, he's not super skilled unless you count work ethic as a skill, which I do. He's just outworking everyone out there. 
Derek Culver did not do much in the first meeting between the teams. He will get a breather here. Just picked up a second foul. J.D. Miller to the line, trying to complete a three-point play, and Miller just put the ball back to the official. Darren George will give it back to him. I don't know that I've seen that before. You take a couple dribbles, you throw it back for the ref, he gives it back to you. <laughs> Maybe the pass wasn't good enough. Darren George not great on his entries. Anyway, hit the shot, hit so the shot. it worked. Try worked again next time. There's Andrew Gordon. Gordon in there for Culver, left it well short. Haley, the offensive rebound. Got it to McKay before he hit the deck. Trust me, Culver's not going to be sitting on that bench much longer. I'm going to give him another minute. McKay with a Matthews screen. Bain stays on him. Now Gordon. Bain still on the ball handler. Haley wants a screen from Gordon. That doesn't work. Out of bounds. Stays with West Virginia. I mean, if nothing else there, you saw think how good a screener Culver is. West Virginia tried about three up top and couldn't get anybody free. A little stagnant. They, that possession was a little stagnant. They kind of stayed right, right on the left side of court the whole time. Well, let's see if they get a shot right here. They've gotten a shot off of every out of bounds play just about. They haven't converted, but they've gotten a good shot every time. Well, the officials are heading over to the monitor. This is about the shot clock. See if the ball hit the rim or not. Can't review possession, of course, till you're under two minutes. Did this hit the rim? Yes, right? Looks like a yes to me. Look, look like it in real time as well. So you, you give you, you give both coaches an extra timeout. You know, Huggy's the fourth winningest active coach. Only behind Coach K, Roy Williams, and Coach Beheim. So you give Huggy that timeout. Let's let's he's been doing this for a long time. A whole lot of wins. Think he's gonna draw something up from back in the Walsh College days? No, they just got it in that time. They're content. They want to run a play. Walsh, Akron, Cincinnati, K-State for a year. West Virginia is 12th year. McCabe, Gordon, sealing off Nemhart. Big size advantage for a West Virginia basket. Mountaineers first in around three minutes. It's a nice play right there by McCabe. They knew what they wanted to do. They wanted to go inside to Gordon. He took his time and got it to him. Robinson, first points of the second half for Alex Robinson. Robinson getting physical with Haley, who crosses him over. Long steps through the lane, and a scoop and score. Here's TCU, though, transition off the make, and Bain punishes the rim with a hammer. Guess what just happened? TCU, another basket at the rim, transition. A little too much celebrating right there on that basket by West Virginia. Gordon trying to squeeze it through to Matthews. Noise on the deck. Haley comes in a little too aggressively, and he fouls Miller. See, Haley. Takes his time, crosses up, gets there. Nice dexterity right there. Everyone's feeling good. What's what do the Horn Frogs do? Push it, and we have a dunk at the other end. Happened so fast, the cameraman couldn't even get the camera down there to see that dunk. How does that keep happening? I, West Virginia's just not focused. I mean, at this point, you know that that's what that they're really looking to push it in transition. Culver back in the game. West Haley. Carler and McCabe for West Virginia. Noy, Nemhard, good extra pass. Robinson off the mark of the three, 
and Bain gets the tip for the offensive rebound TCU. And you know coming down the stretch here, you're going to see a heavy dose of Robinson and a heavy dose of Noy. Robinson's going to have to control this, this end of the game right here for TCU. When I say control, I don't necessarily mean score. I mean, he's got to make the decisions on who, who gets the opportunity to score. He and Bain playing nearly 36 minutes a game in Big 12 play. No breaths tonight. Nebhard late in the shot clock through the iron. Rebound to Lamont West. Okay, Mr. West. Who is body in there? As you said, you see Culver right back in the game. Thinking about Samuel at some point with the four fouls for TCU. It's still too I early. I think it may start trying offense defense subs. Okay. You don't necessarily want him in there for offense, but you're going to want him for defense. McCabe. No. And that's why Culver keeps it alive. Oh, West stepped out of bounds. You see Culver on the line. Keeps the ball alive right there. Tonight after Wisconsin, Indiana, join Steve Levy and Kenny Main for Sports Center on ESPN. How do the Blue Devils play in Blacksburg without Zion? The latest on Bryce Harper, Phillies, Dodgers, mystery team, the next West Virginia Mountaineer mascot, and the NFL linebacker who spends the offseason as an Ivy League professor. Sports Center, 11 Eastern, 10 Central on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Another rebound by Culver right there. Move that's, it, swing it, swing it, swing it. That's 15 for Culver. He's matched his season high. As you so boldly thought he might. I went out on a limb right there. TCU staying in this zone. It slowed West Virginia down. Culver, spin a lava. But Mr. Culver's back in the game. He had been 20 for 60 for the field his last seven. 33%. Six of seven tonight, but TCU again answers with Noy. West Virginia trying to run off the make. Harler. Offensive rebound. Who else? Who else? Mama, there goes that man. 17 and 16. Nemhard try to take Harler. Leans it off the window. Jamie got possession. Coach Dixon called the timeout. The ref didn't see it. He changed his mind. <laughs> He's probably glad the ref didn't see it. McCabe. Yes! <laughs> Welcome to Morgantown, baby. Does this sound familiar to you, this noise? Yes, it does. Noy, contact. Offensive oh, foul. Noy's fourth. Inside, Mr. Culver. The fancy, the ballerina footwork right there. You can't stop him. And then McCabe, splash. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. Right there is the brand new West Virginia Mountaineer, Timothy Eads, a sophomore, the pride of Buffalo. He takes over, he takes the musket from Trevor Keish. He'll be the new Mountaineer mascot for the year. Congratulations to Tim. Fired up the crowd, which doesn't take much to go with West Virginia up four and 212 remaining. You know, I gotta say this. Congratulations to Timothy. It doesn't look like he's going to have to go into costume too much. I think <laughs> <laughs> he is a natural. Everyone else looks like they have to go into costume. He's Timothy's just going to be himself yeah, for the next year. Yeah, you spotted that out. Best costume design goes to Tim's closet. 
A four-point lead, closing in on two to play. West Virginia trying to break a five-game losing streak. And TCU's resume, a pretty tough blow. with The Horned Frogs currently a 10 seed, according to our own Joel Lenardi. Uh, this loss, it wouldn't knock TCU out of the field, probably. It is a Quadrant two game, but it would not help. And when you think about what's coming up, Texas Tech, Kansas State, at Texas. This may have been TCU's easiest of the four games left. None of them are easy, but it's not going to get any simpler for Jamie Dixon from here. Lamont West at the line gets the front end of the one and one. And, and you know, it's a five point game. We still have 159 left. But, you know, as you, as you talk about moving towards March, moving towards tournament time, you know, if they do not hold on right here, this will be the fourth, fourth loss out of his last five games for TCU. That's not a good sign. Five and 12 at home in the conference, just one and six on the road. This ties West Virginia's largest lead. Kevin Samuel back in the game with four fouls for TCU, the freshman center. Robinson, blocked by Harler. Robinson got it back with a steal. Miller contested three, well short. Rebound, McCabe. And Robinson fouls him. West Virginia team, 17 different starting lineups this year. 14 players have started a game. Undermanned, but these freshmen have fought so hard. They are up six, a minute 20 and change to go. Make it three on a triple from Miller. Timeout TCU. The Frogs not dead yet. No, and it's, it's the same. I mean, it's the same problem. That, that time, TCU didn't get to the rim off of, you know, in two seconds, but they got a wide open, uncontested shot out of the corner. West Virginia, that conversion from offense to defense has not been good today. He can't be that wide open. That guy can shoot. We got a game. We're going to have some fun here in Morgantown this last 120. So the lead was six. McCabe had a chance to make it seven or eight at the line. Missed his first free throw attempt of the game. Miller hits the three. His potential five-point swing right there. And I look at them going, going right back inside the culver. TCU will put on a little pressure with Bain and Robinson in the front court. Haley will bring it up. TCU goes back to the man-to-man. -man. They've been in the zone for a few possessions. West Virginia, worst free throw shooting team in the Big 12. West, no. It's a fairly early shot, but it was an open one. Here's Bain, a three. Got it for the tie. Desmond Bain. Poise. Poise, poise. We're ready to write, ready to write them off, and they're right back here. Poise. Another uncontested, wide open shot in transition, though. Desmond Bain, the leader in the Big 12 in three point shooting last year, eighth in the conference this season. Nobody around him, and from the same spot on the floor, TCU hits back to back threes to tie the game. They come down the court and get a wide open shot. Again. You know, if, if West Virginia does not win this game, you know, they're going to go in film session and kick themselves because they're just giving up too many open, easy, quick shots to TCU. And it's been, it's been the whole game. This is not something that just started to happen. You can't blame it on fatigue. You can't blame it on them wearing down. It's happened consistently throughout the whole game. Remember Desmond Bain on Saturday broke a 68-68 tie with a three-pointer to put TCU ahead against Iowa State. Today, he ties the game at 68 with a three in the final minute. Jordan McCabe, Chase Harler, 
Jermaine Haley, Derek Culver, Lamont West for West Virginia. It's Haley. This will not be a two for one situation in a tie game. Five to shoot for McCabe. McCabe got it off to Haley. He's smothered by Samuel. It's a shot clock violation. West Virginia wants a goal 10. They're not going to get it. And TCU will have a chance to win it with the last shot. Big fella. He goes to the bench. Comes back in. His presence is felt right away. I haven't seen Huggy move this fast. Huggy's fired up over there. They showed the replay on the screen. What do you think? I didn't see it. Timeout TCU. You know a thing or two about potential non goaltend calls late in this arena. I did. We hit a similar situation. We hit a shot with five seconds. They took the ball out, ran down the court. Patrick Ewing Jr. blocked the shot at the rim. No goaltend was called. We got out with the win. That's on the rim beforehand. That's a goal to Or on the, that basket, on the, on the backboard. Backboard, not the rim. Well, it's hard to tell from that angle. From that angle, it looked like he took it to the backboard. I don't think it hit the backboard first. Look at, look at the Huggy. Huggy had moved like that since 1980. <laughs> the first year of his head coaching career, going back to his Walsh days. That's right. Let's see here. Is this on the backboard first? It's hard to tell, but it looks like it there. Uh, but yeah, you're right. That looks like a goal. I stand corrected. It does, it does look like it hit the, hit the backboard first right there. So that's called correctly, and West Virginia's up two. Instead, TCU has it with a chance to win. One more look at this. On the backboard first. On the backboard That's first. A that is a missed call. Leaves us in a tie game. So what's the play for TCU? I think they're going to run a little misdirection here. Robinson's going to get it, go one way, and look for Noy looping around back behind. Here's Bain. Just hit the last shot to tie it. Desmond Bain lost it. Robinson on the deck with Culver. McCabe for the win. No. Oh, baby, let's keep on playing. Why not? An elbow burn for Culver, who managed to fight for the ball, which squeezed to McCabe. His shot offside iron, and we're playing another five. Sixty-eight, sixty-eight. TCU won the first meeting by 31 a month ago. And we are headed to overtime in Morgantown. Hey, how fitting is it that Culver comes up with the steal right there? The big fella's done everything else. Why not? Let's play some more, man. This is fun. We're having fun in Morgantown. <laughs> Big fella stretches out, gets on the floor. He's working. Rolls over, gets out of his teammate's way. Is Culver hurt after that, or was that just a little bang up on the floor? That's the big question going into overtime. He's not allowed to be hurt right now. Now, he's OK. He went over there, Huggy, Huggy kissed it for him. He's good to go. That's, that's what you need. That's the it, Huggy baby. Kiss. Right now, the way they're playing, the way they're competing, this atmosphere, who isn't having fun right now? Second overtime game for each team. West Virginia opened the season with a loss to Buffalo. That put C.J. Massenburg and the Bulls on the map. TCU's only overtime loss two weeks and a day ago at home to Kansas. 
Both teams 0-1 in the extra session. Remember, Samuels playing with four fouls. He wins the tip for TCU with a fresh five minutes on the clock. And TCU is dead in the water. They fought back, showed a lot of poise to send this game into overtime. Now let's see how both teams will respond. West Virginia trying to shake off the non-goaltending call, but Miller opens the scoring. A left-handed layup for J.D. Miller, who's got 17. That ties his season high, and it's the second straight game with 17 for J.D. Miller. Colbert. Offhand, and a rare miss, only his second. Ball pinballed around, stays with West Virginia. They're trying to go inside the Culver, which I think is the right thing to do. They have to be ready to hit the next option because TCU is doing a very good job of coming in from the weak side, crowding the lane. And Culver has to be smart when he gets it. Now Samuel's back in, so it's not as easy as when Miller was guarding. West, four, three. Miller, there's a little step in and a gamble from West, but West Virginia recovers, and McCabe has the ball. Culver with 17, West 14, McCabe 12, Haley 11. Balanced scoring evening for West Virginia. Inside to Culver, Samuel's done. That's the fifth foul against Kevin Samuel. Now, TCU, this last 331 is really going to have to figure out how to deal with Culver. It's close, but he didn't go straight up. He, 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 he extended his arm out. You got to put your arm straight up next to your ears, behind your ears right there, or the refs are going to call that every time. For those of you waiting for Temple Memphis, that game is now on the ESPN app. Big bubble game in the American Conference. We'll start whenever this one ends here on ESPN. You for now streaming live on the app. TCU goes with Kendrick Davis, so the Horn Frogs lose about a foot worth of height. They'll go small with Davis in the game for Samuel. Culver at the line, where he's been perfect. Over the 57% the free throw shooter for the year is four for four tonight. Suspended for the first 10 games of the year. What a revelation he's been in his first West Virginia season since returning. Five for five at the line. West Virginia has five in a row. Samuel, a hapless spectator. Bad pass by Davis, and McCabe has the steal. That pressure, smart play by McCabe to slow it down. Harler. Rebound to Noy. It's a fifth steal for McCabe. TCU's turned it over 17 times. And yet here are the Horn Frogs down just three. Robinson attacks and scores over Haley. Fifth steal to go with nine assists and 12 points. Freshman McCabe has played a heck of a game today. The presence not good for West Virginia with a 2 and 12 big 12 record. But with McCabe and Culver, the future certainly looks bright. Robinson got a hand on that. That ball is trickling out of bounds and ahead of the way of TCU. Look at Huggy over there. Woo, Huggy's getting a workout tonight. Haley is cramping up. Whenever you want that water bottle, it's right there. So 2.32 to go in overtime. Haley's played a really, really strong game all around for West Virginia. Junior college transfer out of Odessa Junior College, a former Washington Husky signee, New Mexico State player. 11 points, five rebounds, five assists, couple of steals. 
and he'll hydrate, try to get back in this game. One point lead for West Virginia, 19.16 rebounds for Derek Culver, who has been a machine. Mr. Culver, doing it all. It, it, it's the latter part of his freshman year, but a star is born, ladies and gentlemen. Did you see that, by the way? I did. What do you think? I think if he keeps playing like this, it's a, that's an accurate assessment. <laughs> Robinson. Offensive rebound to Miller in between three West Virginia players. Miller finds Noy, I don't know how, with a left-hand pass. And Noy gives TCU the lead again. Oh, that was luck right there. That, <laughs> that, that was luck on Miller's part. Yes, and it that's, was. That's a high basketball IQ on Noy's part. He saw his teammate in trouble. Everyone else was just standing there watching Miller with three guys around him. Noy cut to the rim, cut to the open spot. The beneficiary. West Virginia takes timeout, still two remaining for Bob Huggins. While everyone else is watching, you see Noy just cut to the rim. Uncontested layup. And Lamont West heard about it from Bob Huggins right at the start of that timeout. Yes, he did. And Mr. Miller said to Mr. Noy, thank you so much, buddy, for cutting, because I was stuck down there. So here we go again. We got 2-0-1. We got a one-point game, TC uh, West Virginia ball. Not the team has led by more than six during this game. It has been a true back-and-forth affair. And again, the first meeting between these two, a 31-point TCU win a month ago. West Virginia played very well in a lot of ways against Baylor Saturday, led for most of the game, nearly 30 minutes. Baylor took over late to win by seven. And the Mountaineers, Undermanned, but they brought the fight. Bob Huggins said to us, look, in, in a way, there's something nice about knowing who your roster is now. They dismissed two players, two are out for the year with injuries, four of their top six scores, lost to injury or dismissal. But it was the constant ebbs and flows, the ins and outs in the lineup. He's got a base of players right now. He knows it'll happen for the rest of the year. He feels good about the fact that they're having fun again, which was a term he used to us, and they look like they've had fun with the energy they've played with tonight. Well, well, well they're growing up. You, you mentioned their last game where they led most of the game and fell apart at the end. Part of that was because of fatigue. Part of that's because of the low numbers that they have. And part of it's because they're young. I mean, we've been praising their freshman core the whole game, but freshmen are still freshmen, and, and they make mistakes. And so we want to see now, this last 2-0-1, how, have, have they progressed since their last game? They're going to have to get a stop. They're going to have to get stops. They're going to have to get big plays. And they've done that so far today. But can this freshman group, can this young core, can this group, this the future of West Virginia basketball, continue to take strides in the right direction? Again, TCU right now on the 10 line, according to Joe Lenardi, two and six in quadrant one games, five and three in quadrant two games today for the moment is a quadrant two unless West Virginia slides a bit more in the net. The season sweep of Iowa State, home win against a fellow bubble team, Baylor. They've got chances to add signature wins. Texas Tech, Kansas State at home, and then a road trip to Texas on the other side of this one. TCU team with Basically, eight scholarship players left. They gave a scholarship to walk on Owen to share his. But outside of him, they have eight remaining. Harler has to call timeout again. What happened there? Well, it's, we've talked about this a few times. They, they run whatever set that they're running. And McKay broke long. He wasn't open. And then you had this four guys standing there looking at Harler hold the ball. You run your pattern, then you got to... Do all that you can, as hard as you can, to get open. And they didn't. They were, they were trying to run the play coach drew up, which is fine. But he heck, when the when it breaks down, get the ball in bounds. Both teams have one timeout left. Both teams are in the bonus. 
Possession arrow, by the way, does point the way of West Virginia. Jordan McCabe and West Virginia trying to break a five-game losing streak at home. Jamie Dixon and TCU looking for win number 19 in what is Jamie Dixon's 100th game as the head coach of TCU. 63 and 36 the record. His 17th game coaching against Bob Huggins, these two old Big East rivals, in a heck of a game tonight in the Big 12. Here's Culver with a left, spins home, a basket for a West Virginia lead. 21 points for Culver, who is too shy of a season high for points. Great call right there, right there by Coach Huggins. You knew they wanted to go to Culver. That time they brought him out, and slid him into the post from the perimeter. Robinson tied up and fouled by McCabe. Boy, if that's a jump ball, would have been West Virginia ball with a possession arrow in the Mountaineers' favor. Instead, McCabe whistled for his fourth foul. Once again, the crowd doesn't like it. Robinson 0 for 5 at the line, make it 6. Ball don't lie. That was a jump. Good crossover right there. He's got all ball. Oh, that's good defense. He's got all ball right there. Ball don't lie. Robinson gets the bounce. His first made free throw in seven tries. And we're tied again. Seven ties, 15 lead changes. Neither team is led by more than six. They go right back to the same set. They're going to slice Culver off this little double back pick. There's Matthews. Noah Haley in the game still with the cramps out for West Virginia. Matthews. And the rebound chased down by Harler. His pass deflected and stolen. R.J. Nebhard puts it in for a TCU lead. Clock needed to stop there under a minute. Did not. Jamie Dixon has to stay off the course trying to get his team into the huddle. The officials have to go to the monitor. The clock did not stop on the Nemhard basket. They will add time, but TCU has the lead. We see the replay right here. Good hustle to run down the rebound. You have a new clock, just relax right there. R Tough turnover right there for West Virginia. And it's RJ Nemhard in the game because Kevin Samuels fouled out. So it's either Nemhard or Davis. Jamie Dixon's gone to Nemhard off the bench. Well, Nemhard gives him a little more size than Davis. You know, maybe not quite the scoring punch, but gives a little more size in terms of defensively. You see it paid off right there. Extra 2.3 seconds put on the clock, 56.5. Little pressure here for TCU. They're going back to the big fella, so this is a question of whether he gets a basket or whether he passes out of it. It's a hard duck in. Haley the back in the game. Double. There we go. Wow, what a pass. Culver to Harler to tie the game. TCU has a timeout remaining. And we'll use it. Cut. Derek Culver distributing. He's had such a great game on the glass and scoring. He ties the game with an assist. You no, know, and right there, they, they, they want to double, they want to double Culver which Noy went to do. I'm sorry, which, which, which they did. Noy didn't drop. He had to drop and take the, the cutter right there. So TCU ball, West Virginia has 17 fouls. So a foul here on the floor means one and one. Doesn't automatically mean two. Horton Frogs out of timeouts. What's the play for Jamie Dixon? 
No, I think I think you got to put the ball in Robinson's hands and let him make a play. Whether he gets all the way to the rim, whether he gets over help and he drops it off to someone else, but you get it to Robinson and let him make the play. Bay has to get it in. No timeout. Robinson with the catch in the backcourt. Alex Robinson, the senior. Guarded by the freshman McCabe. Robinson. Top shot. Left it short. Rebound thrown by Miller to Harler. West Virginia can win it. Shot clock turned off. McCabe. Jordan McCabe. No. Ball tipped out. McCabe again for the win, and again he hits the right side of the rim. Let's play some more, baby. Let's keep playing. Who wants to go home? Toots is to win for McCabe at the end of regulation. At the end of the first overtime, both come up wide right. 77 all. Let's play two in Morgantown. For those of you who were hoping to see the start of Temple Memphis, we hope you have the ESPN app. Overtime number two in Morgantown, TCU and West Virginia at 77 apiece. Jordan McCabe's desperation three comes up just a hair short and to the right at the end of the first overtime. Kevin Brown, John Thompson the third. It's been a wild night in Morgantown. Mountaineers led by six late in regulation. TCU had a couple of threes to tie the game. West Virginia appeared to take the lead on what should have been on replay. A goaltending call was not called, was called a clean block. TCU couldn't get a shot off at the end. Off a of steal, McCabe had a shot to win it at the end of regulation. Came up short, went back and forth in overtime, and now will play a second OT. The big news for TCU, still no Kevin Samuel. He's fouled out of the game, starting center. He's done. Both these teams, John, with very short rotations. What can we expect in this second overtime? You know, at this point, the rotations don't matter. They're both in the same boat. As you said, they both have short rotations. You know, and now it's, it'll be interesting to notice and to observe if anyone packs it in. Just, 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 just the, the mental fortitude that's needed right now. You're in another overtime. You fought. You said, oh, we, we fought the fight. Did we pack it in? You got a young West Virginia team that's just fighting and clawing and growing up right before our eyes. We got a TCU team that is still fighting for the for their life on on the proverbial bubble here. In a spot like this as a coach, what worried you more? The physical exhaustion or the mental exhaustion? It, it, it probably, depending on year to year, team to team, it's both really. TCU the steal on the first possession, turns it right back over. And then a foul. Quatnoy. Quatnoy has just fouled out. So Noy and Samuel both out of the game. And TCU is down to five. I was going to say, when your rotation is only seven and you lose two, that gets rough. I tell you what, though, you have to give these officials a lot of credit because they are taking a lot of heat from Coach Huggins and from Jamie Dixon, Coach Dixon. They're taking a lot of heat from both. And the refs are doing a good, a good job, I think, of keeping their points in this situation. Seventeen points for Noy. He fouls out. McCabe at the line misses. McCabe, member had a chance to put West Virginia up seven or eight late in regulation. Missed the front end of a one and one. TCU hit two threes shortly after. And McCabe missed both. Rebound, tipped around. Culver out of bounds. And it was Culver at 6'10 fighting with Davis, a listed 5'11 for TCU. The Horn Frogs take over. You gotta love that effort though by Culver. He's been phenomenal. He's played 40 minutes in the game, Calder. 21 points, 16 rebounds. 
The freshman a season high in rebounds, too shy of a season high in points. Here's Davis just into the game. And he touched it last. Off the block shot. West Virginia ball. I don't think that's what Coach Dixon wanted right there. The shot? The shot. I don't think he wanted that little one person dribble, dribble, then go to the basket. From the guy who just been on the bench. McCabe. Oh, Miller! A big time smother against Culver. <laughs> that was a big time smother. Six block for TCU. Here's Bain. Harlow is trying to draw the charge, and now we have a foul against TCU going the other way. It's against J.D. Miller. That's his fourth. Oh, boy. See Miller down this end. Nice pass. Clean block. Good hustle right there. Then he gets a little excited down the other end and jumps over back and commits a foul. That's you got to keep your poise. Do everything right at both ends of the court. Don't let your emotions get in the way right here. So now Miller has four fouls. Russell Barlow has not played in the game, the freshman center. Hold on a second. West shot the free throw, but Darren George was walking in the official. And they're going to head over to the table, so that free throw should not count for West. Good news for West Virginia. Who did you say hadn't played, Kevin? Russell Barlow has not played, the Ru freshman center. Russell needs to get up and start getting some stretching in. Now, Jamie did tell us before <laughs> the game, he's a little banged up. There's Barlow right there. He did go through a full shoot-around today, so uh, you figure he's active, unless there's something we don't know. If nope. not Barlow, then you're going to Owen Asheris, who is next to Barlow. He's a former walk-on who was awarded a scholarship last month because TCU had one available. Well, the way and that's pretty much it for TCU. I mean, they're, they're we, as thin as can be. We got we got 358, and the way things are going, both of those two gentlemen need to mentally get locked in because the chances of their name being called pretty soon here are high. And the rest of the TCU roster, you got Lat Mayan, who is out for the year. He's out. Yep. And then you've got Dylan Arnett, a freshman guard who's not played. They intend to redshirt him. So 3.58 to go. TCU down to five or six or something like that, available players. It's Culver at the line, so the officials wanted to make sure they had the right person shooting free throws. West was there first. Now it's Culver, and he misses his first free throw miss of the game. Culver now six for seven. West Virginia back in front. Boy, this is a weird and wild game, isn't it? It's a fun game. <laughs> Robinson out of bounds. West Virginia ball. I mean, if you're bleeding purple and white or blue and gold, heart in your throat kind of stuff, if you're a neutral observer like we are, it's fun, this fun. is a ball. But hey, it's almost March. This is, this is, these are the games you want. McCabe and the foul. Alex Robinson with a foul. That's Robinson's fourth. Extra foul trouble for TCU and a basket for McCabe. McCabe's got the got the double double with points and assists. And 15, hey, 10. he makes his foul shot. McCabe with a new season high in points. He had 14 on Saturday. He's got 15 on Tuesday. Miller taking it into Culver. Miller finishes. He has won that matchup several times. He has. They started off the half with him scoring two baskets in a row. He looks over at Coach and says, Coach, keep coming to me. He can't check me. New season high for Miller with 19. McCabe. Three! How about the confidence on this kid? 
Now Miller again, spinning through Culver. Yes. Miller ties his career high after McCabe extended his. <laughs> McCabe's got a little bounce to his step right now. He's feeling good. He's feeling good. Hello. Missed the heat check. Rebound to Robinson. You knew that was coming. You can tell he was going to shoot that when he dribbled down the court. Miller isolated with Culver and hits a three to tie. You all knew this was coming, folks. It's you coming, tuned baby. in for the J.D. Miller, Jordan McCabe mono and mono. <laughs> Jamie's like, guard him, guard him. Timeout, West Virginia. Bob Huggins has one to go. Mr. McCabe, in his young career, he's having a career night. Dishing, scoring, talking to the fans in the crowd. Right there. He rocks him a little bit. A little hardness, step back, bang. Mr. Miller, ooh, I, 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 I should have shot that one. Give me some room. Take that. Tie game, boys and girls. 156 left. Two great coaches on the sideline. Two teams going all out here. It doesn't matter when you start talking about number of bodies. It doesn't matter who's a freshman, who's a senior. It's basketball, baby. We're in Morgantown having fun. Jordan McCabe's got six of West Virginia's seven in overtime and double overtime. J.D. Miller's got all of TCU's seven in double OT. McCabe, the freshman, Mr. Basketball in the state of Wisconsin, nearly 2,400 points, sixth all-time in the state, with the best night of his young career. McCabe, behind the back dribble to get space on Davis, and McCabe will go back to the line. Foul is against Kendrick Davis, his third. Davis had to go straight up. Jordan McCabe was a bit of a sensation as a kid. He had a cameo with the Globetrotters. He was on the Ellen Show. He, he's a pretty highly touted young man coming in. And he said, that's all in the past. I'm going to make a name for myself here in Morgantown. 3.1 point per game score, 1.6 assists. Great opportunity for McCabe down the stretch. And he has delivered tonight with 20. He guards Robinson. Miller against Culver. Miller's won this matchup three times in a row. Not that time, baby. Travel. Great defense by Culver. And I'm surprised. Miller banged the three the last time down the court. But I'm surprised they didn't go to him inside where he's had a lot of success on Culver. Little weave is going to come back to McCabe, and he's going to get an on ball by Culver. That he does. The slip, Culver, offensive foul. Charge drawn, violently so, by Miller, who's playing with four, and Miller was rammed into the stanchion at the end of that play. Third foul against Culver, and Miller gets up as the fans see the replay and don't like it was Miller in the restricted area. <laughs> His foot was hovering above it. Of course, you can review this play. Last two minutes, overtime. Culver with the elbow in. Well, well as you said, immediately, I mean, with, with the force and the violence, that Culver dipped that shoulder, they're, they're not going to, they're, they're going to make that call. I mean, he, he dipped that shoulder right into him. Yeah, I mean, you can review block charge, but if it's just an elbow, if that's the reason for the call, it's an elbow either way. One minute to play, double overtime. RJ Nemhard got around West and a late whistle for a foul.
You know, I think the key to what you just said was late whistle. I think it was a foul. Amazingly, it's West's first. RJ Nemhard, 19 of 33 at the line this year. Missed the first. TCU collectively is 10 of 18 at the line. Haley runs the point. Lost the dribble. And a cylinder violation of foul against Nemhard. Wow. The old cylinder violation, huh? <laughs> That's a very interesting time to call that one. The old cylinder violation. There's a cylinder that goes from the, from the offensive players, an imaginary cylinder, I should say. Thank you for floor, clarifying. From the floor. <laughs> Change the rules and double over time. The right call, though. Mm. You're not sure. Haley gets the first. Jermaine Haley, 60% free throw shooter. Got to have a good, strong box out right here for your TCU because you know the big fella's coming. Rolled at home anyway, three point game. Who do you want taking the shot? You got 40 seconds. I want to go inside to Miller. Miller sets the screen. Miller open. Missed the three. Bain fighting hard as the offensive rebound. A three for Nemhard is good. RJ Nemhard ties the game at 88. <laughs> There's plenty of time. I didn't think they needed a three, but heck, heck why not? West Virginia uses its final timeout. <laughs> R.J. Nemhard, a 30% three-point shooter, ties this game again. Again. Are we in overtime number two, three, or four? Where are we? <laughs> We're in two. Nice hustle for the rebound right there. Short closeout, Mr. Nemhart. He wants to play three. <laughs> 11 ties, 17 lead changes. J.D. Miller for TCU, Jordan McCabe for West Virginia have gone shot for shot here in overtime number two. In this overtime, he said it, Mr. Miller. Takes a nice casual three right there. Takes him inside, shows him his ballet move. And down the other end, the freshman, Mr. McCabe, growing up right before our eyes, comes in averaging just under three points a game. I don't think he's going to have too many three-point games from here on out. 22 points combined in the overtime. Those two with 15. J.D. Miller, TCU's fourth leading scorer. Jordan McCabe, 3.1 per game score. West Virginia can attempt to hold for the final shot. And what do you want that final shot to be if you're Bob Huggins? Well, you're definitely going to hold for the final shot. And then you're going to try to go into the big fella. Then you have to be smart if they're doubling early. And if he gets it, if he gets a double, to move and slide to the open spot so he can hit you for hit his teammates for an easy shot. But you're going inside. Jermaine Haley. Guarded by Nemhard, gets it to Culver. Culver tied up, that's a jump ball. Possession arrow to TCU with 4.9 to go. Do you want to play three? Clear tie up, great play by Desmond Bain. Miller with four fouls, had the double. And TCU will use its final timeout. So now you have just under five seconds, 4.9. That's a long time on the clock. 
They're probably going to try to get the ball to Robinson on the move, some little curling action, so he catches it on the run. And then you just got to play ball. Again, TCU has five players on the court. Two have fouled out. Maybe Russell Barlow is available. Then you go to the former walk-on Owen to share as they are very low on numbers. West Virginia's five have played basically the whole game. These kids are exhausted. And for TCU, they are trying to end it right here in double overtime. Kendrick Davis inbounds. Here's J.D. Miller. Miller is on the sideline. Wow. That's just crazy. That is just crazy. You're absolutely right about that. Robinson was open. I think that Miller was supposed to kick it to Robinson coming up the middle. He, did, he chose to keep the ball and stepped out. So what we have here, four seconds? Plenty of time. Clearly out of bounds. No timeouts left. You, got it. you must get it in. Run your play. Get open. Haley. Here's Harler. Colbert. Could you ask for anything more? Culver point blank with a chance to send us home. We are in Devendorf range, folks. Woo, I need a nap. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, you man. can't go anywhere. These teams. We're in this together now, John Thompson the third. The shot from Harler, it would have counted. It was clearly off in time for Culver, who has dominated the glass today. West Virginia has had a chance to win it at the end of regulation, at the end of the first overtime, at the end of the second overtime. And Culver, oh, so close. OT number three on the way. This is why we love college basketball. You never know. You never know. You TCU, never know. TCU fans, West Virginia fans, they're watching this game. To folks that have just been mindlessly surfing channels or perhaps are looking for bananas alerts on Twitter, welcome to the show. It's been as back and forth as anything we've had all year. 12 ties, 19 lead changes. J.D. Miller playing with four fouls. Alex Robinson playing with four fouls. TCU down to basically five bodies. West Virginia not much more. And we'll jump it up for the fourth time in the game. Let's keep going, baby. They're young. They're not tired. How can you be tired at 21 and under? Bob Huggins is back on the stool. Jamie Dixon takes a seat. For how long, who knows? Miller jumped a little too quickly on, on that jump. Got the ball not at its height, shall we say. And we have a jump ball violation, which I think completes bingo for the game. And West Virginia will take over. Noy and Miller have played 43 minutes for TCU. Robinson, 45. Bain, 48. Noy is fouled out, by the way, with 43. Culver and McCabe, 45 minutes for West Virginia. Here's McCabe. Got it. He has 22. By the way, Harler 46 minutes. Jermaine Haley with 47. And he's missed some time with Krebs. There's Robinson. Alex Robinson, the senior, with a drop off to Nemhart. Kept it alive to Miller. Desmond Bain has had a quiet overtime. Buries a jumper at the elbow. 17 for Bain. See this TCU team, everyone on the court can score for them. You know, down this end has, has, has been McCabe Culver. And a steal for Bain. Jumped right in front of the Culver pass. Fourth steal for Bain, 16th steal for TCU collectively. And if Culver has a flaw, He's a good passer, he, but down there he gets tries to get too cute. That's his seventh turnover. Robinson. Most of them have been passing out of the post. And he's fouled by Culver, John. That is Derek Culver's fourth foul. Alex Robinson will go to the line where he's one for seven. Alex 
I mean, this is about as hard to fathom as anything in the game. Robinson, a 67% free throw shooter, one out of eight. And he gets the second. First Ooh. clean make from the line today. And TCU has the lead, 20th lead change of the game. You know what, though? As this game is going on, and we're now in our third overtime, the young man with the ball seems to be gaining more and more energy. West. That was a long shot. Rebound to Davis. That was a long shot. That was a wrong shot. I don't know what Mr. West was thinking right there. How Clyde Frazier of you. Bain. Haley wanted no part of that. Nice penetration, Mr. Haley. Doesn't give up on it. Not today. Got to earn it. Superb. Guy Jeff Steyer under the basket. By the way, thanks to all of our cameramen and women who've been here for a long time. Bain way off the mark. Out of three. West again. Got it. Robinson. No. Rebound to Haley. We they, have 240 to go. They got lucky right there. Half the West Virginia players were in man, the other half were in zone. They weren't sure what defense they were in. Here's Culver. Double teamed. Harler pushed it out to Haley. Ten to shoot. Haley with a slip. Blocked by Miller, playing hard with four fouls. Haley gets it back and scores. Jermaine Haley with 15 points. Good hustle right there by Haley. Again, West Virginia's not sure what defense they're in. And again, an open. Again, they got lucky. TCU gets a wide open shot, they just miss it. West Virginia has threatened so many times to pull away. Mountaineers have led for about 33 minutes worth of this game. Hey, man, we're a minute 37. That's a lifetime in this game. Harler got it for three. Largest lead of the game. Nemhard, wild shot off the side of the basket. West Virginia ball with a minute 16 to go. Nice pass right there. Harlow, that's his spot. Bang. And Haley looks like he's cramping up again. He does not want to leave this game. Harler will inbound, gets it to Haley, and Haley is fouled by Davis, his fourth. Now, Coach Huggins is going to get everyone together right now, make sure they know what defense they're in. And amazingly, TCU's missed five straight shots, even though they've been, they've West been, Virginia's been muddled defensively. They've been open shots. The ball just hasn't gone in. Coach wants them to go to a zone right here. The last couple of possessions, two guys were in zone. Three here man to man. I, I hesitate to say, John, that TCU looks like it's running out of gas because goodness knows they've come back time and time again in this game. Hey, man, we have 114. It's, it's way too early to start talking about either one of these teams running out of gas. It's the largest lead for West Virginia, though, and Haley extends it. This, by the way, is a career high for Haley in points, although it, at this point we might as well just tell you who does not have a career high on the floor. Three possession game. Robinson penetrates. Whoa. Fatigue is setting in. Understandably. But the decision-making that TCU 
the decisions they're making right now is not that good. One minute, one minute to play. They don't play again until Saturday. That's, that's the one silver lining at this point. Jermaine Haley shooting two. Jermaine Haley just hit one of two. It's a 10-0 West Virginia run. Don't you want to keep going, though? Don't you want TCU to go on a run right here? Let's stay for four. As, as, as a neutral observer, I hope we get to seven. <laughs> exactly, yeah, man. I want, I want to hit Syracuse-UConn territory, but it ain't looking likely. Haley one for two, nine point game, three possession game if they're all threes. Nemhard, that's a three. That's good, six point game. He heard me. Timeout TCU. It's a two possession game. RJ Nemhard with the triple. With, he is second. With 49 seconds. That's nothing. You know who doesn't want this game to end? Who does not? Our buddy, the Mountaineer, who's going to give up the position. That's right. And shortly. <laughs> Six-point lead, West Virginia. Now, first of all, two questions to you. First of all, does TCU have to foul here if they don't get a steal? I would. I would to try to extend the game, especially in light of how poorly West Virginia's been shooting the ball. So, you know, what I would try to do is, is and it's early to start this, but I probably would. You know, see if you can get a turnover. See if you have West Virginia in a in a compromised position. See if you get one hard try. And then if not, send them to the line. The second part of this is Robinson, Miller, and Davis all have four fouls. So it would have to be Nemhard or Bain, or else TCU is going to be down to maybe Russell Barlow if he's available. Maybe Owen share is the former walk-on. Robinson does not foul. And there's Nemhard, and Nemhard tried for the steal. He is called for the foul, only his second. West Virginia will return to the line with a six-point lead. It will be Jordan McCabe. Jordan McCabe TCU's the main, they're not going to quit. West Virginia's going to have to put them away. They're going to keep coming. McCabe missed his first three free throws in the game. He's now hit four in a row. Once again, a three possession game. What a night for Jordan McCabe. His previous season high before last weekend was nine. He had 14 against Baylor. He's over 20 here. Davis to go with 10 points and six steals. I mean, I mean, 10 assists and six steals. That's a jump ball. Robinson just tied up Culver, so TCU keeps possession down by eight. Would have been Robinson's fifth foul, but it's not. No timeouts for TCU. Robinson gets it into Miller. Oh, was Miller on the sideline again? You yes, he was. Me. He was on the sideline at the end of. The second overtime when TCO had a chance to get the last shot, and he was out of bounds again. Stay on the court. McCabe. Bain fouls him. Bain's third. McCabe will return to the line. It's just about on ice for West Virginia. You feel comfortable saying that? Yeah, I do feel comfortable saying that. Okay. Eight-point lead. TCU's got three players with four fouls on the court. I know it's been a strange night. Jordan McCabe, nine-point lead. I tell you what, through all the craziness of this game, if you're West Virginia, if you're a West Virginia fan, you're comfortable knowing that Huggy's over there because he's been here before. He's done it before. He's going to do it again. Still a three-possession game with three threes. Robinson, still a three possession game. That's a two, obviously. Just in case anyone forgot how math works in the third overtime, a lamb's worth two. Haley, 
And he's fouled by Nemahart, so he has not fouled that yet. Derek Culver, by the way, has hit a milestone here. 22 points, 20 rebounds. He's the first player with a 20-20 game for West Virginia since Maurice Robinson, December 7th of 1977 against CCNY. So 42 years ago, the classic rivalry that was West Virginia CCNY. McCabe with 25 and 11, career highs by a lot. As Haley misses the first. Hey, both freshmen, outstanding games. Those two, we're going to see a lot of those two in the years to come. Mm -hmm. Haley, 7 for 11 at the line. You think they're going to sleep well tonight? I think they're going to sleep well till Thursday. Ice bath central beforehand. Miller misses a three. Culver with his 21st rebound. Yeah, give me one more just for good, just for good measure. A great basketball game we had the fortune to witness tonight. If you are here, if you are watching at home, you're not going to forget this one soon, if at all. An epic in Morgantown on what looked like a sleepy Tuesday in the regular season. We play three. Derek Culver and Jordan McCabe, the Knights of their life, and the West Virginia Mountaineers in a lost season beat TCU in a triple overtime bonanza. Absolutely amazing. We're going to step aside, and then Derek Culver is going to join us, and we'll try to keep him awake throughout the interview. West Virginia wins by eight. The 2020 man will stop by when we return. <laughs>